Hi, and welcome back to Learning DaVinci Resolve. And in this video, we're going to kind of wrap up with the basics and show the deliver page. Now we're going to, uh, we've imported our footage with media. We've edited the timeline with edit. We've done some color corrections and some tweaking of the look in color. Uh, we skipped Fairlight because that's a whole audio beast that we'll get to down the road. And now we're on Deliver so we can output it to the format that we want and share it. So kind of get started here. We have our timeline on the bottom, just like we've seen in other places. I want to make sure that that is set on my entire timeline unless I'm specifically uh, only want to render out a section of it. If I'm doing the whole movie, I always want to double check that I'm set on entire timeline. I've got my clips above that. Don't really need them in here uh, other than a reference because there's not much I can do to them. So I can just turn them off and save some room and I can open this up a little bit so we can see some of the detail here on the deliver page. For all your DJI needs, turn to the experts at multicopterwarehouse.com, the number one authorized repair center in the United States. See why Multicopter Warehouse has been voted number one time and time again at multicopterwarehouse.com. Now, sometimes people are like, how do I change the file name? I don't know what I'm doing over here. And it's not that difficult. We're going to go through the different sections of the delivery options so you know what you're doing. First off, there's three tabs in here, video, audio, and file. We'll start with video, and we want to make sure we're set on export video, which it should be. What format? Normally, it's going to be uh, QuickTime, MP4. Uh, something like that that you're going to work with. Which codec are you going to work with? Usually we're going H.264 unless there's some reason to do something else. If this is for higher end production, they may want ProRes or DNX or something, in which case that's fine. But if we're just using MP4 and 264, this is going to be great for YouTube or Vimeo or Facebook. We don't need to do network optimization. The resolution we can set whatever resolution we want to output at, and 1920, 1080 is the standard, so that's 1080p. Don't need to do anything different than that. Do I want to change the frame rate, which I can't because all my footage is locked in at 2997. The quality that I want, I want automatic quality, single pass or multiple pass, keyframes, frame reordering, an encoding profile, base, main, or high. Uh, I just leave that on auto. And then we have some advanced settings in here. Pixel aspect radio, ratio, I'm leaving the default. Data levels, I'm leaving the default. Data burn-in, I'm not touching. Now, use optimized media and use render cached images. Now, I never want to use the optimized media because that's going to be my low resolution if I've had to optimize it to be able to work with it better. If I have rendering turned on in the edit page, then I may want to use the render cached images unless I'm using a lower resolution. For like DJI drone footage or GH4 footage, I'm going to be using ProRes 422LT as my cached images, in which case that's fine for output because it's actually better quality than the original footage, so I'm not losing anything by using the render cached images. There's flat pass filter and a couple other options here that I usually don't work with because I just I want to take my footage and move it over. Now if you want to use some of the defaults that are in here you can select YouTube and just go to 1080 and it will automatically set those things for you. Same with the Vimeo. There's some Vimeo plugins and if you're going to Final Cut, Premiere, Avid, or Pro Tools then you can output to those uh, types of formats as well, which will create XML files for you to bring in over there. So YouTube, we can just go 1080, boom, we're done. Now we go over to the audio tab here and we can change the codec. The defaults are usually just fine unless you're doing something special. You'd never really tend to worry about the audio. Then we go to file and we want to give it a name. If we don't give it a name, it'll call it timeline one or untitled or something. So this is going to be my river footage and I can 
pick a file subfolder. Uh, I can browse to it up here. It's already set to my desktop, so don't need to bother with that. How many digits in the file name. I, now, the only time I'm using these extra ones, uh, each clip starts at frame and start timeline to code. Those are, if I'm like outputting for stock footage, then I may just be able to set it up to do a bunch of individual clips instead of one long clip because when I submit it for stock footage, that's all they want are individual clips uploaded. So I can do my whole edit, pump it out as individual clips and upload those individual clips to the stock footage sites. It saves me a lot of time from having to go back and do it later. And one thing that's really cool down here is it shows me my disk space currently used is 83%. After the render, it's still going to be 83% because this is going to be pretty small. Once I have these settings done, I click Add to Render Queue, and we bounce over to the right-hand side, and we see our render queue. So I have one job that was canceled, one job that was completed, and I can add multiple jobs in here. So if I have a lot of work to do, but I don't want to take time to render them all right now, I can set them all up in the render queue, and then before I go to bed or when I'm going to leave or take a break, I can go in and select which ones I want to render and then just select start render. And off it goes to create that file for me. So that's really handy if I, I just want to keep working, I just want to keep working, and then later on batch all those rendering jobs. So that's what the render queue is for. Up in the top we see our frame rate, what we're uh, actually rendering at. This is an iMac 5K. This footage is rendering about real time, about 24, 25 frames per second. So it just depends on the type of footage that you're working with, how many things you've done with it. On my MacBook, it may get down to nine frames per second. On some of the footage I work with, it may be 150 frames per second. But it's a good indication of how your system's working. Well now, that's all there is to it. We've exported our edited video to a format that's compatible with YouTube. Now it's just time to, to upload it to our YouTube account and share that link with our friends and family. So we can't wait to see what you've come up with. Be sure and tag us, drop us links, send us comments, let us know what you're working on so we can see how you're coming along with your editing style and expertise. So until next time, we'll catch you later. Thanks for watching. Be sure and click that like button if you like this type of video and click on subscribe as well as the bell icon to be notified every time we do a new video. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you later. Bye-bye.